for the technical difficulties. We're back. Um, but as I was saying, this little guy, um, we don't know if it's a male or a female quite yet. Um, we will send a blood sample off to a lab and they will let us know um, if it is a boy or a girl. Um, so right now, I'll show you um, what we do to feed them. We weigh them before and after each feed just so we can kind of monitor their growth. Um, today, lovely pieces of mice. You guys can see that. Ooh, ah. <laughs> we cut up little pieces of the mice for them and they'll just eat a whole. I know you're looking at this bird thinking, oh my goodness, only a mother could love that face, but when they come out, they look like little dandelions. You know, when you go outside and you the dandelions, they just blow away. He's, he's starting to kind of get his adult feathers. It'll take him about um, a month to two months to um, actually look like Thor and Loki did. So how many times do you guys have to feed him every day? Right now we are feeding him, or then... Uh, four times a day. Uh, when they first come out, or if they first hatch, we feed them five times a day. Um, so every three hours. Right now we're feeding them at 7, 10, 1, and uh, 4.45. So what's pretty interesting about these guys is most birds and anything really, um, you'll eat and you poop. It takes these guys about four days to get their first poop and it's quite the process. They poop out these little, not little, bigger than a quarter, sacks of poop. It is the strangest thing and it smells really, really bad, but um, if we're lucky we'll get to see it on camera, but probably not because he pooped at seven. <laughs> but we'll keep feeding him this way until he decides that he doesn't want any more. He'll stop eating as soon as he's full. Sorry, I keep saying he. It's, I don't know. Well, you can see the black feathers that are coming in. Those are the adult feathers. These are called the white feathers or down feathers. And again, guys, we are in um, the ASA or the Australia South America Bird Barn. Thank you guys so much for coming back. We apologize for those technical difficulties earlier. And we have Abra, who is um, feeding a tawny frog mouth chick. More like a monster. <laughs> <laughs> now, since these guys are originally from Australia, how do they do with our cold weather here in Kansas? Um, with a lot of our birds here, uh, we bring them in on, for the winter, um, so they come inside when it is below 50 degrees. So starting, I believe next week we're going to start putting birds outside, our meat and fish birds, so like our ibis, our boat bills, um, a lot of you guys have seen the Sariyama, Sam, you know him, um, they're all going to go out next week, and then um, all the parrots and the tawny frogmouths will probably go out in the following week because it should be warm enough. So. They don't get to be out there in the cold. Too cold for them. They're in a heated barn all winter. What if it gets cold again? But what happens if it gets cold again? Our Kansas weather can be really weird. Uh, that's a good question. We um, follow the weather um, really well. Luckily with these guys, um, they're easy to pick up. They don't move very fast at all. As you can see, our adults are still sitting over there where we left them. Um, but super easy to feed, find, uh, if we need to. Also, for birds that we can't bring inside, if we need to set up heat lamps or something, um, we could do that as well. I think he's getting sleepy. I think he's about done. So what we'll do now is we will reweigh him, make sure he ate. You can see his little whole body, his big old feet. But a lot of people think these guys are owls. Um, they're not. They're not related to an owl. If you guys look up um, what a nightjar or whippoorwill is, they're related to those. Pretty cool. Look very similar. Um, but they don't have the sharp talons like an owl does or the strong legs. Um. Wow, it looks like you guys have to keep a lot of really detailed records. We do. It's I don't really want to 
look at all of our lovely handwriting. But we have a protocol that will tell us from um, what days we go from day zero all the way up to 30 plus, um, and it tells us what should be happening, what they're eating. Um, right now, when he first comes out, he starts out in a little bowl like this with just some dry deck on it. And now we've got him to a point where he has sticks, which sticks are very important because it helps with their feet. Um, we put the sticks in their bowl so he can um, learn to grip and um, perch at a later area or a later time. As you can see, eating wears them out. <laughs> but um, also, you can see their name, um, frog, the frog mouth, because when they open their mouth, it does look like they are frogs. The adults have a sorry, squeaky chair. The adults inside of their mouth is yellow. Thor will show you, which is kind of neat. Um, tawny frogmouths don't really drink a lot of water, um, which is interesting. Kind of when it rains is when I seem to see them actually drink. It kind of just drips in their mouth from these little parts. So how in danger are they? Do they have any threats in the wild? Um, they do have threats. It is mostly people and pets, like um, cars, um, like wind chills. They're pretty bad for these guys. Also other birds, like falcons, um, cats, dogs, and things like that. And these guys can live to be about um, 14 to 20 years old, I think. Um, and they also weigh about uh, one and a half to two pounds, so pretty light. They look like they're pretty hefty birds, but really they weigh like air. <laughs> well, that probably helps them to fly. Yes, yeah, for sure. <laughs> they're very silent flyers, kind of like, like owls. Too. So they don't they don't make a lot of noise when they're flying, which helps them sneak up on their critters and bugs. And you said that they can live to be about 14 years or older, correct? correct. So Thor's getting pretty up there. Thor's up there, yeah. I think that was probably um, a wild fact, but knowing um, that they're here, they're they're safe from all predators, have our um, fantastic vet care, and have a great diet, um, I'm sure they live way into their 20s. So Thor's not missing a beat. Like I said, he's 18 and she's 14, um, and they they're chugging along just well. And everybody's probably wondering that these guys are the parents to our um, little one over there. They are not. Um, these guys um, are older, so they are not producing any babies at the moment. So there are favorites out there for you guys to get to see on exhibit. So how many tiny frog mouse do we have here at the Sedgwick County Zoo? We currently have 11, um, with our 11th one hatching this morning. Um, we will house four on exhibit, and we tend to kind of put them in pairs, um, so that's kind of all the amount we can put out for right now. Do they like to mate for life, or how long do they usually stay together with their partner? Um, I guess they do typically um, mate for life. They will stick together as long as they can, unless um, one of them dies off, then they might go find somebody else, but for the most part, they will spend the majority of their life together. All right. Well, that was so cool. Thank you so much for showing us the tawny frog mouse and the little chick. And remember, everyone, even though we're closed, we're still caring. <laughs>